We're here with Shopify CTO, John Michelle Lemieux, and we're going to talk about his approach to innovation and the company's growth and basically his most valuable technologies. Hi, thanks for joining us. Thanks. Uh, thank you for having me, Larry. Glad to be here. So I guess give me the big elevator pitch of what Shopify tries to do. Uh, we've been following you guys for a while, but I'm, I'm not sure, you know, everybody's familiar with how big you guys are and what kind of scale you guys have now. Yeah, sure. Well, let's zoom out one level. I think as a company, we believe that a world with more entrepreneurships probably going to be a better world. Um, and we believe that entrepreneurships kind of a, a, about a storytelling endeavor, right? About experiences. So what we realized is we looked at entrepreneurs around the world realizing it's actually really hard to be an entrepreneur. And how can we take some of that pain away? So Shopify is literally a platform for entrepreneurs where we've made it easy for people to start, run, and scale a business by, by things like how do you get a website up and hosted? How do you take payments? How do you detect fraud? How do you fulfill items? How do you print shipping labels? So our job is really take all the pain away from uh, people with great ideas who want to uh, you want to bring them bring them to the world um, and bring technology to play. So what's fascinating with this is because of the internet, we've been able to really bend the learning curve for people starting businesses by using technology. And um, I think that's what we're about at Shopify. So is most of your customer base e-commerce based or retail? Uh, we have a bit of both. I think like one of the, the beauties about Shopify is we're a multi-channel platform. Um, so you can sell online, you can sell in store. Um, we actually have like physical devices, card readers, label printers that you can have in your retail location. Um, but we also let you sell in other places. If you want to sell uh, on social channels, would be Facebook or Instagram or on, on Amazon. So we, we, we joke internally sometimes, if you can sell by carrier pigeon, will make that possible as well. So we're, we're pretty agnostic about where you're going to sell. And um, I think that's part of entrepreneurship is actually being able to sell wherever you have customers. And that's what our, our platform is kind of designed and built uh, to power. So a lot of Shopify's, you know, moves of late have really focused on developers and ecosystems. Um, what, what are some of the benefits and challenges with building out an ecosystem? Yeah, well, let's think about like why we even bought it in the first place. Um, uh, again, our belief in entrepreneurship is also a belief in creativity and brand. Um, so a lot of the tools that we built on our platform let entrepreneurs own their relationship they have with their customers, uh, own how they actually want to go to market, like what they look like, what style, what stories they want to tell. Um, so for us to do that, we've had to build into the platform a lot of customizations from day one. So we have our own templating language. Um, we give a lot of flexibility for merchants to customize, whether it be their online store, what their retail experience looks like. So we've had kind of an API DNA from day one into Shopify. And that's, that's how it's, it allowed us to have Shopify almost be molded for each entrepreneur. And, and one of the ways that that's seen is a lot of people are shopping uh, online or in store. They don't know what Shopify behind the scenes that's powering it all. And that's been a, a, a big API DNA in how we've built out Shopify. So a lot of the developer announcements we've been made recently has just been us amplifying, uh, making Shopify a lot more pluggable. Uh, and we're using this to um, allow entrepreneurs around the world to, to use Shopify a lot more actively. So things like you have to plug in different shipping providers, depending on what country you're in, um, different payment methods, depending on what your country you're in. So I think this has been just a doubling down our developer commitment we've had. And it's allowing kind of the huge developer ecosystem around the world to actually help entrepreneurs um, uh, create these really great um, retail experiences, whether it be online or what what is the role of the developer and and when you say developer are you thinking more like large company developers i mean the integrations with everybody from fedex to ups to whoever or or are you talking sort of the grassroots developer i, I guess what's the i guess how do you break that developer market down i i think we're we uh we're talking about or i'm talking about all types of developers. So we have a, a marketplace of developers who are doing things like customizing and building great online experiences, right? So designers, CSS, HTML developers. Um, we have developers who know how to automate businesses, right? Who just are really good developers creating things like automated workflow or inventory management. And then as you said, we have a lot more enterprise um, development shops that are doing big ERP integrations, integrating into WMSs. So literally, we have an, econ an economy of developers that are building on top of our platform, mostly because of uh, the breadth of, of merchants that we have, right? We have, we have small merchants that are starting up, merchants that are scaling, and then, and then merchants that are, you know, IPOing as well. So I think that what's great uh, with the opportunities we have for developers on our platform is just the breadth of, of entrepreneurs that we have gives a lot of really cool technical challenges that developers can tackle. 
can you can you group the technology pain points based on your customer base? Like like what what's the biggest tech challenges for SMB, one that's kind of midsize and a company that's you know at scale? Yeah, well, I think the I think the tech challenges for for people starting up is literally taking away the tech challenge, like just making it easy. We have um, uh, just you know think about what you'd have to do if you had your own you know you're selling hockey sticks for example. You want to bring that online, you know, having to um, figure out where you're going to host it, how do you make it performant, um, how do you make updates to your platform, um, and then literally plug in. How do I get payments? How do I get um, et cetera. So those are technology challenges that um, for us, we've uh, tried to remove completely from the equation. And our entrepreneurs, in some ways, they can focus on marketing, they can focus on product development. Um, and that's been kind of, that's been our bread and butter for a long time. And it's been easy to solve. And I think the technology challenges as our merchant scale um, are things like integrations, as you said, like, how do I, how do we integrate with um, providing different shipping options globally? How do we in, in, integrate with different payment providers or, or different payment methods? Things like um, after payments are becoming really popular, right? Instead of paying right away, you pay in installments. Um, how do we make that happen? So I think like our mission really is to make all that go away. We want entrepreneurs to focus on their business, but the technology challenges uh, right now is a lot of the internet hasn't actually been built with commerce built into it. And we're in, in some ways, Shopify, are, we're really powering to standardize a lot of these commerce primitives in the internet. Um, you know, one example that's great is, you know, you, you were probably around when, when I was growing up as well is the, the first version of the, of the, the browser, the web browser, you know, it had a back button, it had a forward button. I think it had a stop button too, but there was no pay button, you know? And, right. and if you think about that, you're like, that's kind of strange knowing that like everything that humans have built Right, whether it be roads, bridges, boats, has all been to facilitate commerce. And here we are, we built this insane technology platform called the internet. And it's in, in its first version, we forgot to put anything related to commerce in it. So, so we're, we're almost filling, we're filling in this gap of, of bringing commerce technology into like the mainstream now. Um, and everything we're touching, we're always trying to think, like how could we make this so that um, this gets built as part of like the core internet that we're, that we're kind of investing in as well. So what, what emerging technologies are most important to your platform approach? Um, so I think the one really important technology is um, almost what I call, you know, WYSIWYG commerce, right? So WYSIWYG is what you see is what you get. Um, and uh, that word's been used for, you know, WordPress ed editors or text editors. But for commerce, what does WYSIWYG mean? It means, what do you see on screen? <laughs> what do you see in and how do I make sure that that's the exact product that you're going to get? So some of the cool technologies that are making, you know, WYSIWYG commerce come to life are things like AR and VR, being able to see your product in 3D, be able to zoom in and zoom out and see textures, making sure the colors are right, um, are really fascinating. Taking that and putting into your into your office or into your living room um, are some of the technologies that are kind of blending the physical and digital world. Um, Shopify is investing a lot in those. Uh, a lot of the um, returns that we're seeing with online shopping are because people aren't getting the exact color they think they're seeing on their screen or that thing won't fit. So I think there's a, there's a really uh, cool uh, opportunity to kind of bridge the gap between the physical and the digital to uh, make that actual shopping experience a lot more WYSIWYG. Uh, so that, that's one that's, that's super fascinating. And um, I think we're leading the charge in, in how we actually make that a standard part of the internet as well. So, so when you say WYSIWYG, I instantly think of WordPress. Is that sort of the idea that you'd be able to have these creation tools where you can sort of build in commerce with, you know, basically like you would format a paragraph? That's no, actually the opposite is, is what you see on screen is what you're going to get when it gets shipped to your home. So okay. What, right. So you're, you're browsing online and you're shopping, you see a shoe or you see a shirt and it shows up on screen. And I'm like, when I get the box and it shows up in my house, like I want to make sure it looks exactly like it did on screen or in the box. So um, what we're doing with AR and VR technology is allowing you to actually have those really rich shopping experiences where although you're buying it online, it's, it's going to look or it's going to feel exactly um, how you saw it. And, and in some cases, you can eat with some of the AR art, art technology, you can actually take that product and actually have it show up in your room digitally, right? Put that sofa against the wall, put right. that picture all digitally and actually get that experience so well what i meant about WYSIWYG is almost you can imagine like like what you see is what you're going to get and you can you can experience that before it actually shows up in your house so you have less you know uh, entrepreneurs have to deal with less returns and buyers are a lot more uh, obviously a lot more happy because it just fits or it just works or it just uh, matches with their carpet 
So what are the key customers or what are the key markets that you're targeting in industries? And, and I guess what's the customer base look like today in terms of company size? Yeah, so we traditionally uh, had targeted some of the predominantly English, English countries. So uh, the UK, Australia, Canada, and obviously the US. Um, and that's still probably r- r- uh, roughly around half of our customer base. Um, but we've obviously been scaling internationally. Like we've, we have a, roughly around 175 countries in which we have um, customers using Shopify. Um, but the last couple of years, we've been um, really focused on international expansion and reaching these entrepreneurs around the world who, you know, again, needed some technology to help them run their business. So we focused on uh, a couple of core countries um, outside, and we've done that by internationalizing Shopify from languages, providing multi-currencies. Um, and in three of the four countries we've been focused on, we've seen uh, uh, over 100% growth in uh, those entrepreneurship uh, growth in those countries, which is pretty exciting as well. What what are the biggest hurdles with international expansion? So I think the first one was language. Um, so we spent a lot of time on uh, internationalizing Shopify, and and Shopify is not just a product, but we're also almost like an entrepreneurship coach to a lot of people. So if you go to Shopify.com, we've got great videos on how to do SEO, how to do marketing, how to grow your business. Um, so what we did uh, as part of our international expansion is making sure a lot of our material. On, on almost entrepreneurship coaching was in place in different languages. Um, and the same thing about the product itself. So the product was uh, you know, translated, I think we have about 18 languages now of which Shopify runs in. And then the third point was literally um, uh, focusing on almost international trade features within Shopify. So you know, allowing you to sell and settle in multiple currencies with the click of a button, allowing you to integrate with local uh, payment methods so, for example, you know, different countries are, are, are you know, not every, not every country is a credit card company uh, or country. Um, so we had to have different uh, payment integrations, which we've, we've kind of, we built into Shopify for a while, but we're literally making sure we have global coverage of those. Um, so you can see a lot of localization work that's allowing Shopify to kind of be used um, globally now. What, what's the role of AI and machine learning into your plans? So I think the, the first thing around ML and, and AI that's really exciting about Shopify um, is that it's, it allows entrepreneurs to get a good understanding of who's buying for their shop. So one of the things we spend a lot of time is on fraud detection. And um, you know, when you're running a business and you're starting, um, losing money with chargebacks or being defrauded, kind of like it means a lot to merchants. So we focus a lot of our effort on, on helping entrepreneurs have a really good idea of who's buying from them, um, what the risk is with that, and automating, you know, whether it be the insurance, or the protection of, of those orders. Um, but one thing that's really important as well is uh, when someone signs up to Shopify and runs a business, it's their data, right? Entrepreneurs have their data, it's their, da- it, it's their uh, business gems and their business secrets. Um, and we don't kind of cross collate data between merchants. So a lot of our ML and AI work has been really on making the entrepreneurs on our platform really productive. So either protecting them, or in some cases with some recent launches, and then with their marketing. And, and getting really a, a really good understanding of how their business is running and helping them recommend what their next step should be in growing their business. So things like how much should they should be spending on marketing across different channels, um, what they should be doing about promoting different products. So we've been really focusing on, on most of our ML on really understanding where an entrepreneur is at in their maturity and then really focusing so that when they come into the office on Monday morning, what are the most productive tasks they can be doing to be growing their business? Um, so that's where we've been, we've been launching a lot of our ML and our, our AI work. Um, and uh, it's, it, we're seeing some great results because entrepreneurs, they don't have a lot of time. And I think we want to uh, make sure our ML and, and AI initiatives gives them back a lot of time. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. 